Hello everybody, welcome back to another session by K21 Academy. Today our expert trainer will be discussing about OCI services and identity domain. So let's get into the video. So let's start with the, uh, you know, OCI services. So as I mentioned, you know, the pillar services. So th this is those five pillars of OCI network, OCI, uh, you know, cloud, we can say. Identity and access management, network, compute, storage, and the databases. So we are going to have, a, you know, the portfolio description of these five services. And let's see what all is there in that. Right, so first say talk about the identity and access management. Now, if you have already say created an account of uh, cloud, uh, say some time back, maybe, you know, uh, six months or back or so, then you are going to see, you know, uh, the services, uh, you know, the old services, like let me show you how how it looks like. So this is my old account. Okay, it's created around say two years back. So the new services, uh, you know, uh, portfolio enhancement and all those things we can see is getting reflected in the account whenever the new services are launched. Now the only thing which we are not seeing here is if you see here the identity. Now this is basically the services, uh, you know, the identity services, which gives you user groups, uh, uh, policies, compartments, and federation, all those things. Okay, now this is uh, according to the previous, uh, you know, model of identity and cloud services, which Oracle is offering. Now Oracle, when you see or create a new account, Oracle has come up with the concept of identity domains. Okay, till now Oracle has not, uh, you know, given any path uh, of migrating, like say, uh, you know, account of uh, these type, the old account to the identity domain. So identity domain is nothing, but it is, you know, uh, considered as the service, but it has got all the, you know, um, you, you can consider it, consider it as a container and it has got all your user and roles, federation, single sign-on configurations, XAML, OAuth, base, any, uh, you know, provider you want to use it, all those will be there in that domain. So by default, when you create it, Oracle is having the default domain, but there are, uh, you know, around five types of domain which uh, Oracle provides and they are like, you know, the premium and the paid ones. And that is like, you know, when you have got large number of users, in those cases, you opt for that. And apart from that, the Active Directory integrations and all those things are pretty seamless here. Okay, so that is the new, uh, you know, uh, say I will say the concept which Oracle has but changed it and has created, you know, come up with the concept of domain. You can create multiple domains for segregating the users, like say, you know, for production development and all so from that is you know at the domain level control you can have it so that is another way of implementing it but yeah i would like to show you the another account which you know we have created it for one of our customer and how the domain uh, things come so here you are not seeing any domain this is the old one okay let me just log off from here and show you the new one okay so now here, when I go, this is the new account like created say one month back. Now here, if I go, you are seeing this domain concept is there, right? Under identity and security, you can see a lot of services are, uh, you know, uh, moved to the domain. And if you see this domain, you know, it is basically, uh, okay. The default domain is created. Now this is there. You have got seven users, 14 groups, and I think around 50 groups you can create it and around 2000 users you can create it in the default domain. So that is the basic one you can say. But as uh, as I mentioned that it gives you around five domain types, uh, you know, the premium and uh, external users and all those things. So that way it is going to increase your uh, expansion. 
you you can add multiple domains there so if i just click to the default domain now here it gives you all your user groups uh, various services you can create it the security options so those all you can see here so the important thing is like you know you can reset all the passwords in one shot okay uh, now if i say change the domain type now you can see multiple domains see your oracle apps premium domain is there where you are going to have uh, you know unlimited support limit to uh, six non oracle apps you have got the premium domain and you have got an uh, external user domain now which has basically got an unlimited users you can add it something like that right so and i think yeah they have got the soft limit for all these things if you want to increase more you can increase it but yeah there will be a hard limit as well for sure right so as of now we were not exploring uh, you know uh, the domain type so that is where we were just seeing the domain here you can reset all the passwords and uh, you can onboard the users so you can create the users in it even you can create the users from the csv file too and you can sync the user from your active directory as well so that way it has got uh, many features and oracle has basically you know streamlined because single sign on is always going to be a uh, bit complicated stuff in uh, oci and even in the uh, you know when you go to the government cloud okay there the single sign on is going to be more complicated because most of the services are not compliant with uh, government cloud so government cloud will have those services which are say fedram compliant hipaa compliant and all and just to let you know idcs service is not government compliant service till now okay so whenever say you are going to create an instance in or say you know in the government data centers you definitely need to have some sort of federations in that so recently for one of our customer we are basically do integrating the oic instance for the single sign on and that is where we are seeing a lot of challenges which uh, which is coming so still we are working with oracle to sort it out but yes a customer is using an azure active directory and now we have integrated that but uh, the oic integration is uh, not yet done as a part of single sign on so most of these services are not there um, in government cloud i don't uh, uh, see the identity services is still not there but yeah oracle mentioned that okay six months down the line uh, you know we are working on that and making it comply right oh federation so federation is basically what you are doing is you are having an external uh, you know service provider or say the identity yeah identity provider to which you are going to allow to you know store the username and passwords like that is what you do it uh, in case of uh, you know you want to have a login to get authenticated via okta or uh, one one on uh, one login or maybe the active directory so that means you have authenticated the user to be username and password to be maintained by the third party or say the uh, external resource that is known as the federation so even if you go here the federation i think the uh, here yeah, enable single sign on so identity providers so that is basically when i say talk about the idcs services that is also the another services uh, means you know you have federated it here so here you can see that identity providers i have got various identity so this is basically for the single sign on and the multi factor authentication those things you can add it here so identity provider is like suppose uh, you know when i want to add an identity provider i can go ahead will uh, you know do the exchange of the json files and or say the xml file which has got all the ids and they will be doing the handshake between the oci and the um, the say active directory so that is where you need to do the configuration part and then once it is done 
uh, you will be logging with the uh, active directory so you whenever you are giving the url it will uh, you know take you to the active directory page and that is where you are going to see All right so if i say take you to the government cloud here check cso so this is basically my government cloud url okay which is not a common one but yes here you are seeing let me just copy this yeah here it is right so here i can show you so this is say you know um, one so here if you see this is the azure active directory single sign on setup is done and apart from that you can also go ahead and log in from here this is a non federated account or say the local account so if i say go here it is going to take me to the azure active directory url i will be uh, doing the username and password and maybe the multi-factor authentication is set up then i need to enter the passcode too and once that is done it will again redirect me to the oci console so that is what the federation means or another option is i can directly log in from here and this is directly going to take me to the IDC. So this is known as a local user. So my users were not federated. They were created as a local user and another one is a federated user. That means my user and the password is now maintained with the not in the OCI console, but whatever the service provider I have selected identity provider I have selected those will be the one who is going to maintain. So guys, this was our expert from Team K21 Academy. And if in case you have some doubts and queries, then we have something really special for you. We have our free class on how to become Oracle Cloud Architect for certification and higher paying jobs. So in this interactive session, we will be discussing about why you must learn Oracle Cloud, OSA architecture, network connectivity and core services, our eight week roadmap, plus 30 plus hands-on labs to go from complete beginner to the expert level. So all you have to do is just log on to k21academy.com forward slash OCI02. You'll be seeing this kind of page. Just click on book your free seat now, select your event date, add your name, your email address, your phone number, and click on yes, save my seat. Moving ahead, you'll be seeing this kind of link. All you have to do is just save this link, add it to your calendars, and I'll see you in the free class. Till then, keep learning.